Welcome back, folks. Uh, so today we're going to look at a, a, a chip. It's one of my favorite chips, I guess you could call it. And what it is, is a, it's a Max 7219. It's a Surly Interface 8-digit LED display driver. These are, these are quite nice chips, especially for people working with microcontrollers uh, to, to get a display. And they'll display up to, one chip can display up to 8 digits, and then you can, you can cascade them to have 16 or 24 or how many ever digits you want. Uh, I've never had the need to go beyond eight digits. And uh, it's just, it's a very simple interface. So you've got a data in here, you've got a load, and you've got a clock. And then the rest of it has just got to do with the, uh, the digits. So you've got the digit outputs here, and you've got the segment outputs. So it'll drive uh, eight segments of a se seven segment display with the decimal point. And uh, you just need these three pins here to control it. So basically what you do is you put your data, present your data on pin one, you clock that data in with uh, pin 13, and uh, you select the chip with the select switch here or the load. So what would normally happen is you you bring this load low and then start clocking your data in with pins one and 13. And then as soon as you go high on this, it sends the output to the digits. So it, it will retain the that output until the next time the load signal or chip select in the case of the uh, 7221 until the load goes high and then it'll put in the, the next output. It's a standard 24 pin 0.3 inch spacing package. It uses a standard SPI interface, SPI interface uh, with the, the, um, the loads as well. So it's in two pins plus the chip select here. In the registers, you can set the display brightness. You also have uh, a resistor on here, this one here, I set, which sets the maximum amount of current that can go to any particular digit. Or give it actually a little table, allow you to choose, uh, where is it, table 11, allow you to choose um, the, the correct resistor. So in, in our particular case, we're going to use like a 12K resistor for what we're doing here, because we have 1.5 volt red LEDs we're going to be using. And uh, some of the neat things about it is that the digits can either be, you can have the, any particular digit either in a, a decoded mode. So what, what that will do is that for any bits that you send to it, it'll decode those into a digit. And I think they have down here. So here's this here, this table five shows you the decoding. So the, the data that you put in there, and this is what it'll give you out. So the first uh, numeric digits here are straight binary to decimal versions. Then there's a, a, a little tick mark, which is just the, the center, the, the G segment lit up. And then you've got H, E, and L, and P, and blank. So you can, you can put up a help message or whatever, you know. And that can all be done through decoding. Or there's an undecoded mode where you can go in and you can set each of the the segments on or off depending on um, the value you send it so each each particular one here so, so the corresponding sentiment line so d0 is g d1 is f d2 is e and so on and the decimal point is d7 so any value from 0 to 256 can be sent to that particular digit and then you can you can display whatever you want within the bounds of uh you know these are these are the display elements that you have so it is very, very versatile in that way. You can use it with, with, with more than just microcontrollers if you want. I've used them before with the little computers uh, using parallel ports to bit bang the clock, the load, and the, the data in. So they can be used in that way as well. So, But today, uh, on a little example we're going to do, we're going to breadboard one up, and we're going to use a microcontroller. In fact, we're going to use a, a pickaxe microcontroller. Uh, which is very simple. I like pickaxe microcontrollers for doing something really, really quick. The IDEs available for them, and I like the older IDE, the, the newer IDE I've not uh, used that much, but the IDE is, is pretty simple. Like you can get the basic program all listed up and then you can make some changes and just pass it down uh, to the chip right away. It takes a little bit less time than working in the Arduino environment. And because it uses basic, it's it's fairly easy to understand. I mean, you can you can read the code immediately, uh, and even a beginner can. Anybody who's ever worked with a with basic before can read the code. Uh, a little bit less um, obfuscated than what C is. I mean, C can sometimes be you know, pretty hard for a beginner to to work with. 
while I have you here, I'm going to show you the program that we're going to use. So this is a program actually I wrote uh, quite a long time ago. Uh, it looks like about 2013 when I had a, a different company, a company called Aztec MCU. And I wrote this, basically it's a template. I think I used a, a, a pickaxe 20M2 for this, and that's what I'll be using today. But it could, it could work with any pickaxe whatsoever, as long as you, you know, use B0, B1, and B2 as your outputs. Uh, and you could change that. So that, you know, your pin definitions are here, so you could change it very easily. So the way this template is laid out, it's pretty self-explanatory. So we have, uh, we have in here pin definitions that we, we use within the template. And then if you want to do, you know, add things to it, you would put them into the user pin definition area. It just makes the, the code a little bit more structured. And so here we've got constants defined, and then we've got a user constant area. And then we've got variables defined and a user variable area. And then we've got your basic setup code here and the user setup code. And here's our little sample program that we're going to use to run the display. And the way I, the, the sample program I wrote here, it's just going to show A, B, and C. And it's going to flash the rightmost uh, decimal point uh, just to show that we can do that. And I'm going to do that using... Um, the uncoded output and it will output each one wait for a second and then we're going to go down here and we'll go and we'll run through the numbers from 0 to 255 and what this is this I've got a little function here that'll parse that eight bits into three digits so it'll do a binary to decimal conversion in three digits and that uses the decoded function of the chip so we'll be able to demonstrate both and be able to demonstrate that you can select uh, either coded or decoded on a digit level. And here's, here's just the rest of the code, that, how I've made out uh, the various functions here. So the, the three functions I use are max parse, which is the one that uh, does the parsing of the digits, max out, which is called by max parse. And uh, then we have max init. So this, this initializes the chip. And I, I've got a, in here a little explanation of what each of the, the bits does. And it's very well documented. So I'm going to put this code. I'll put this in the description. And anybody who wants to take it and play around with it can do it. It's completely free. No. <laughs> and of course, because it is completely free, it comes without any warranties whatsoever. Uh, if you build something with it and it blows up and destroys your neighbor's house, uh, it's entirely on you. Okay, what we're going to need here, of course, is a, a Max 7219. And they talk down here about supply bypassing and wiring. Uh, oh, yeah, it's a good thing here to point out that both, it's got two ground pins, uh, pin 4 and pin 9. Both must be connected to ground. Don't forget that. And uh, they suggest a 0.1 UF and a 10 UF electrolytic. And then we need the uh, resistor for setting the current. So I'm going to actually put two point ones in there because uh, laying it out on a breadboard, you you have kind of have your voltages in very different places, and you know putting a point one near the grounds and point one near the VCC, so on both sides of the breadboard basically. So uh, without further ado, uh, let's go on downstairs to the lab and uh, we're, we'll breadboard this up and see if we can get it to work. Okay, here we are down the lab, and on the way down, I had a little change of heart. Rather than uh, using a breadboard, I'm going to use this uh, this IC layout prototyping PCB. And the reason I'm doing that is because I, I I can I can use this as a as, as a module. So I might do some little experiments with it uh, in the near future. So I'm just going to build up a little module that I can use for that purpose, and then we'll have a connector down here to connect it up the five pins that we need. So we need uh, VCC ground and then the data, the clock and the load pin. So that's five total pins. Here's what I'm going to use as a microcontroller. This is a, a pickaxe uh, 20M2 and I'm going to use it in, in this little board here which you know just provides a power supply. It's a zero insertion force socket on it, a reset switch, a little connector here to go through the uh, programming interface which is defined by pickaxe and uh, it's got these little headers for attaching to the pins so you know what a pickaxe is if you do know what a pickaxe is then you know what it is if you don't what it is it's, it's, a, it's a pick microcontroller and it's got on it uh, both a bootloader and 
the basic interpreter and all you have to do then is is you download the basic to it when you create the basic in the ide it converts it to a p code and then the p code is downloaded and the the chip itself interprets the p code this is a board that i uh, made before back when i had a my other company and uh you know it, i think times you see that little omega sign with oms on it it's it's, it's it's something I did. I've used that symbol for about two or three different companies I've had over the years. Um, yeah, it's, it's kind of followed me around everywhere. So I made these up at one time and, and they were quite popular. Uh, I think I sold a couple of thousand of them at one time. So you just put your microcontroller in there, clamp it down, then you have access to all the, the pins here and each one provides uh, voltage like ground vcc and the signal so very convenient but that's what i'm going to use to uh, drive this thing when we get it uh, all built up and that's what i'm going to go do now so i'm going to take this over to the solder bench i'll cut out the piece of the board that i need and i'll come back when it's all finished and soldered up okay here we go now what i did here is uh, let me get another one here so if i get another one of these um these displays. So what I did is, is uh, I took off, like it's got uh, this little uh, thing on here, which I, you know, I took off the peel, the peel. So that's what I did, look. And then what I did is, is I put some of this um, polyamide tape over the top of it. It kind of give it a little bit better contrast because it's, it's got a yellowish color to it. Now the LEDs are red, but still it does kind of tone down the white. So you get a little bit better contrast anyway. So here it is, it's all wired up. Now they suggest you keep the connectors as short as possible. So I, I ran them right underneath the, the chip, the, the display, because it, it kind of stands up a little bit. So you've got that little, uh, like a, I don't know, 32nd or 16th of an inch there. So you can get the wires in underneath it. There's my 10 UF capacitor there, my 2.1s, my current setting resistor, and my header here, which I've got uh, five pins on so we'll connect that up and this is where uh, the program i have the program set to connect it up to right here this is uh what's called an axe 27 it's the programming adapter that uh, was made by pickaxe okay here we go put the power in there that power led should come on i don't know what this pickaxe had in it before yeah, it's it's doing something weird. So I'm gonna I, I will load down the program that we have here right now. We should see that come up here on these. Okay. So the red is received data, the blue is sent data, and the program is coming down. That's it. So we're gonna go A B C and then start counting here from one to two hundred and fifty-six. So it works. So it's pretty simple to use. If you want to try it out, like I said, I'm going to leave a link to my template and that should work uh, just out of the box to do this and then you can have a look at it. I think that I commented the code well enough that it should be pretty easy to follow. And of course, you just go to the data sheet for this chip here and if you know pickaxe microcontrollers, you, you know how they work. So, well, that's it. Nice chip. And uh, yeah, it's, it's a great way to get a seven segment display on a microcontroller or a little computer of some sort. You could interface it with a, a, an analog to digital converter to get a multimeter or something of that nature. So yeah, very, very handy chip. So that's it, that's the Mac 7219. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to, uh, I, I'm going to extend my playing around with this chip. So the next, uh, the next project I do with my sponsor, PCBWay, I'm going to design a module that uses one of these displays and one of these chips and a nice little PC board. It can be more compact and uh, I can have them around for any time I want to, to experiment with it. And that's what I'll do. I'll work with PCBWay to get a module built up for this. And you can see that coming up in the future in a couple of videos. Well, that's all I have for you today, folks. The Mac 7219, 8-digit, seven 7-segment seven display driver. Handy chip. Thanks for coming out, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got something out of this. Leave me a thumbs up. Subscribe. We'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.